Welcome to the Solution of Real Estate Podcast. This is where I'm Phil Sexton, Jeff Seabach, Heyo. co-host the show, and we bring you guys rising stars, industry icons from the uh, Arizona market to across the country. And today, we've got a rising star in the house. A super rising star. A super rising star yeah. who's got just, I love the hustle and her story that she's about to share with us. Yes. She actually has a different... Um, I would say marketing track than a lot of people that we've had on the show. You're saying that most realtors are old school marketers and we finally found one that's got a little bit of new school in her. Yes, I agree. <laughs> yes, <laughs> something like that. So this is episode 106. Let's give Shannon Gillette a round Woo! of applause. Tell her what she's done, Phil. Welcome to the party, Shannon. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, we know that you normally say no thank you when podcast invites come your way. So... I, I don't know that our listeners know this, but Mauricio has a very charming <laughs> phone voice. <laughs> so if you hear from it, it's okay for you to say yes, just like she did, even though she mostly says no. <laughs> so Shannon, last year, she did over 15 million. You work in the Southeast Valley of, of Arizona, right, of the, of the Phoenix marketplace. Mm -hmm. And so what, how do you define the Southeast Valley? I live in Queen Creek. I grew up in Chandler. So really Chandler, Gilbert, Queen Creek, Santan Valley. Lisa. So you like went to Perry or? Corona del Sol. Oh, Corona del Sol. Come on. Yeah, come on. That was like a. That was a guest wrong. <laughs> yeah, was a guess. Yeah. Corona del Sol. Awesome. And so you work in the Southeast Valley primarily. Last year you did almost 15 million or over 15 million. And this year you decided to double it. Yeah, let's get to thirty. To close um, around thirty million this year. I'm Another sure. round of applause for that. Yeah. Awesome. How many units do you know? I know so that's that'd it. be a good question. I probably should have been prepared. I, sometimes I like to throw random yeah. questions that we didn't prepare because I was just curious on. Uh, that, that just sounds like a lot. It sounds like a I lot. I coach several agents. As you grow, it's a good thing to track that. So yeah, yeah. So thank you for coming. First of all. And yeah. of course, so what is the, what, what's the, I want to get into a little bit of the secret sauce of, of how you do what you do, but your, your rise of um, getting into sales and the fight that you had to even get into what you started with new home sales, right? Mm -hmm. So how did you get into new home sales? Yeah, so that's a great question. Um, I guess going back, I was raised by a single mom. Like we, she worked two jobs. We struggled to make ends meet. I remember there were many years we didn't even have a dining room table. We ate dinner just sitting on the floor. So I was raised by this mom who worked really hard, and I've always had like an amazing work ethic. Um, I didn't go to college. I graduated high school, and I started leasing apartments for Mark Taylor Residential. Did really good at that. It was 2005, and I saw this sign in Florence that said Anthem at Merrill Ranch coming soon Pulte homes and I told myself I'm like I'm gonna work there I want to sell new homes and I started telling people about it and they're like Shannon you need they only hire people with college degrees like you're not qualified for that job so for one year I didn't give up I kept applying and applying and going in the sales office and just trying to get this job were you getting but, interviews um, I finally got my first interview in 2006, um, and finally, it was wow. a group interview. Um, that sales manager saw something in me. He offered me the job. I walked into my first day of new home sales as literally almost the day that the market was changing. So my coworkers, we had 19 model homes, a huge sales team in um, Florence, and my coworkers had just gotten out of that like taking order season where people were camping out in front of the model homes and yes. basically did not. To work, you're just like, what yes. lot do you want? Yeah, they're very lazy. Yeah. Yeah. So I came in like I worked hard for this job. Like I want to do really well. So I was just working hard, working hard, just learning everything I could of how to sell a lot of homes and treating everyone that walked in the door like they were going to buy a home. And uh, my coworkers were feeling the market shift and they were focused more on the fact that they're about to get laid off or looking for another job and moping around and not positive. And I was like, man, I have to just stay in my own lane, work hard, sell homes. My first year of new home sales, as the recession was starting, I was 23 years old. I was the number one new home sales consultant in the entire country That's for right. the um, largest That's home. Awesome. So, yeah. yeah, so it was really cool. I had eight wonderful years in new home sales. It was awesome. I loved it. Um, but I started to have a family. I have three little boys and um, in the new home sales world. Three boys. So you're totally outnumbered at home. Right? Yes. Like, yes. No I pink around. I have one dog. <laughs> 
Yeah. One dog? <laughs> yeah. 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 So lots of boys, lots of craziness. Um, so you won't find a lot of moms with young kids in new home sales because it's a very hard job. Like my husband and I have different days off. Like you're in the sales office. You're basically, you live there. Um, you have no flexibility. So in 2015, They don't leave the job interview with flexible right? yeah, no, yeah it's a great job if you don't have like the small kids yeah but, sure um 2014 i left new home sales to pursue pursue resale i was really scared because i had just seen so many resale agents fail and it took me several years to just take that leap because there's a lot of um more of a guaranteed income in new home sales well you so. get to be 100 percent commission as opposed to not right yeah so yeah so i i did um started in resale and I took some, a little bit of time off. I, that's when my four year old was born right around that time because um, I just wanted to spend more time with my family and things sure. um, because I missed out. Like my uh, oldest son, his first steps I got on a video while I was sitting in my sales office. It's, I, I was trying to think, <laughs> was your, in the Pulte sales office. Did you hear that? You can't just breeze I, got, I was caught up on the, in the, 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 the transition. Sorry, I missed yeah. it. Yeah. No, I'm good. In the new sales, go ahead. No, I was thinking, did you start with launch right when you came out? Pretty much. Um, yeah, I started with a smaller broker that then transitioned and launched is just a few years old. So Yeah, I was thinking it yeah. wasn't available. That's what yeah. I was trying. Unfortunately, that spun my head and thinking, did it start in 16, I thought, the year that it started, or 15? I was like, you had to start with someone else. Yeah, so um, I, my broker is one of the co-founders of Launch, the broker okay. that I was with. Yeah. So we um, have been with Launch since day one. Exciting. Yeah, yes. nice. So been with Launch for four-ish years now. Does that mean you get stock in the company? Not like EXP. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Wow. wow, I wasn't thinking well, that. that. I was, uh, well, because uh, we ran into Chris Karras in the airport, and he was saying um, how- Is he, I think he's one of the co-founders, yes. right? Yeah, and he was- And just, Robert Joppe? Yeah. He was just excited about you know starting lunch and the success that they've had there. Yeah, Congratulations so to you! It's yeah. been so good, um, and we're very happy for you. No, I'm excited. I was thinking also because I was trying to think of did have we had another launch person on? I think you're the first launch. We haven't had Jaffe on yet. Huh? Yes, that's yes. right. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Okay, first he's listening to see how well how nice we are to Shannon. Oh, okay, good deal. Good. He's like, how would we interview the? So I do use red signs. Yeah, and black. black and black and red. Okay, yeah. all right. Yeah, I have a couple more points to brag about you before we start asking more about more business questions. That's it. But top forty under forty in the Southeast Valley since two thousand seventeen. Yeah, meaning like over and over again. Yeah, nicely done. Um, Realtor of the Year nominee for the Southeast Valley. Wow. They just built a new building, didn't they? The South well, so that's through Real Producers Magazine Thursday nights the awards ceremony. So I don't know who's winning yet, but a nominee is. Good enough, right? Oh, so <laughs> you're you're you might be the winner Maybe. of Realtor of the it. Year. Oh, wow. wow! So yeah. when this gets launched, we could potentially be talking to Realtor of the Year of Southeast Valley Top Producer Magazine. I'm gonna bet that it's you. That's I just gonna be my. I, she's I, here with us. How now. could she not win? Yes. <laughs> um, I have. Uh, you know, we did a little googling to see who is Shannon oh. Gillette as you as you are about to come and, and talk to us on our podcast. And Jeff, did you come across her Instagram account? Uh, yeah, I have Insta Envy. Yeah. Insta Envy. Yeah. Yes. See, um, I look more like Drew Carey and not like Shannon, so I can't get people to follow me at all. Drew Carey's got a lot of followers. <laughs> oh, <you know. laughs> Damn it! Then what is it? <laughs> it's no, but I mean, tale, but you're I mean no, but I mean, I'm super impressed because you see uh, winners and losers in Instagram, and obviously, you're clearly a winner. You're over twelve thousand followers which is i can't wait to dig in to find out how she did it because everybody wants to know i hear i just see other people out in the in the real estate world talking about how to grow followers mm -hmm. um but i don't know that they have many as her so well and in doing 30 million annually right mm -hmm. with most of it coming from social media and i know that just a brief conversation before this there, that includes some past clients, obviously referrals and whatnot. But the origination of much of your business comes from social media. So can you tell us like how you got into that? Because in new home sales, were, did it start when you were in new home sales? Or yeah, so I think a lot of like good realtors come from the new home sales world because we're very disciplined. We learn like that true sales, like how to overcome objections and closing and You're all that. Very, so yeah. we come out of it and we're going to hopefully implement that same like. <clears throat> 
scheduling and all that. Because in, in resale, you can get kind of lazy, right? Because you don't necessarily have a boss and all that. So very true. Um, and I love marketing. It's one of my favorite things. So um, I think of Instagram sort of like a TV show. So when you watch TV, like maybe you're watching Drew Carey or something on TV. <laughs> the price is right. So, yeah. Oh, the price is right. <laughs> so you're watching a TV show and you're there for the TV show, but commercials are sprinkled in, right? You don't just watch all commercials. So the uh, biggest mistake I think a lot of agents make, and this is just, uh, most of my business comes from social media, so it's what I focus on, and everyone has their own thing. Mm -hmm. I don't buy any leads, I don't do any of that. But a lot of agents, you look at their social media, their Instagram, and it's, it's all commercial. commercials, yeah. pictures of homes, and Instagram needs to be authentic, and mm -hmm. people need to get to know you as a person, and that 80-20 rule, 80% personal, and then 20% commercial. So if you think of your Instagram stories and your feed more like that TV show, um, you will reach more potential buyers or yeah. even... So, if I were to look at an agent's feed and it's just all house pictures or a house picture with writing on it that says clothes, like, no. Oh, yeah. oh, you mean the she picking on us right now? Yeah, <laughs> she is. She's pointing at us in the corner. No, but you guys yeah. sell so much real estate, so you're doing something right. It's just... Um, not but not Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> so, please help us. Please help us. <laughs> We're trying. So I, a lot of people, and you're a, a coach, so you'll probably be like, oh my gosh, Shannon, you're doing so many things wrong. I don't call any leads. I know it's so bad. I spend that time. No, it's about selling houses. Because a too. lot of people are like, you need to be on the phones and calling and knocking on doors. I spend probably two hours a day on Instagram. And you can't just... Post something and then leave. Post something and leave. Yeah, you you so I yeah. spend, you know, where maybe I want to do, be doing things today that agents weren't doing five to ten years ago. And maybe five years ago you'd spend that extra hour calling people. Where today I'm getting DMs on Instagram from millennials because our, our largest pool of buyers out in the marketplace are millennials. They're graduated college. They're getting married. They're having kids. They're buying homes. They're not young teenagers anymore. I'm a millennial. I'm 35. So I grew up with computers. I understand the concept of it all. But I invest a lot of time in Instagram and that is engaging in other posts, always commenting on the people that comment on my posts with more than four words and it boosts everything up and updating my story all day long. So your story should be kind of an insight to your day. And there's a strategy behind that. So I have three little kids. So I might post like a video of my kids fighting in the backyard or putting up a poll, like what do you like better, this or that, and just getting that engagement. That There's my boring? son in the bathtub last night and talking. And um, it's so weird how our minds work, especially like the younger generation. Yeah. We have virtual friends. I follow people on Instagram I've never met, but I could tell you where their husband works, their mm -hmm. dog's name, uh, where they went on vacation, and I feel like we're friends, and they don't even follow me. They don't even know me, but it's so weird. But we can, as realtors, do that, and I just recommend following people that do Instagram really well and getting ideas for posts and letting people in on your personal life. And that was really hard at first. I used to have two pages, a business page and then a personal page. And about a year and a half ago, I made the decision to merge them, and it was very hard to make my personal page from private to public. So I'm like, man, now yeah. you are in on my life. You any mm -hmm. I anybody and my kids and yeah, my so it was hard, but it's paid off and. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, congratulations. It makes All right, you so more authentic, more relatable. Do you, did you learn the 80-20 approach? Because um, I have a little history with that approach. Did you invent it? No. <laughs> I'm not that good. No, no, no. <laughs> she did her research on who she was coming to talk to as well. Nice. Mm, she kicked me first. I like it. Uh, good. Um, no, so there, I uh, started in real estate in 2003, but I, in 2005, I was introduced to a company called Service for Life. Mm -hmm. And Service for Life was a newsletter for realtors. It just sounded similar. I don't know. Right. I'm not saying it's exactly the same. But in Service for Life, they said you had to do a newsletter that was 80% about real stuff. Because nobody wanted to read a real estate publication, which was all real estate ads. It was almost very similar to that approach because they said, well, you have to because the because their theory was this, is that 
the person at the time, someone only moved every five years, where now they move every 12.8 years. Mm -hmm. And then they said for the four years that they're not moving, they don't care about real estate, but still similar, because in today's world, people care about life going on. And then once in a while we sprinkle in the ad, right? So same, similar. I did. Yeah, I mean, it's awesome. You think about other industries, like I follow, like for example, a wedding photographer. I'm never going to meet a wedding photographer. We hope not. Because I'm married, yes. right? But I enjoy following her because she sprinkled, well, mostly it's about her life and her kids. And like, I do enjoy seeing some pretty pictures every once in a while. But if it was all pictures, but all isn't time, Instagram only pretty pictures? No, so stories is meant to be behind the scenes real life, like not pretty. Your feed should look very pretty. I should be able to go. There's so many like basics that I think a lot of people just could implement and grow. Could you give us a couple Okay, so first, that are... if I go to someone's feed, <laughs> right at the oh, top, yeah. right at the top, I should see like, who are you? So some bullet points, like I'm really involved in my church, like that's very important to me. So I have that first, I'm married, I three boys, then I'm a realtor, and then here's my link tree where you can put all the different websites, you know, you can learn more about me. And then in your feed, in your first eight like squares, they're called tiles, you should get a really good picture of who you are. So I strategically will post like, there is a lot of real estate in my tiles, but there's also, you will be able to tell right away, I have three boys, I'm married, I go on, I travel, my highlights are all updated so you can learn all about me really fast. Because remember the attention span is like seven or eight seconds. So it has to be like right away, they kind of need to know who you are. And the stories just need to be authentic. You have to be, if you want your Instagram to bring you business, which a lot of my business comes from Instagram, you have to be on top of your hashtags. Um, I had, uh, a friend who her sister wanted to sell her home in like some small town in Virginia and she's like do you know of a realtor here um, she needs to sell her home but someone that's really good with digital marketing and all that so my first thought was to hashtag that city with realtor and find the realtor that way because if they're doing Instagram well like they can get that listing in front of the right people so do you ever look at the stories on the hashtags or do you just strictly go to the tiles yeah so we can all follow hashtags so yeah. You know, certain certain hashtags I'll follow and they'll come up in the... Yeah. In the I, I want to talk to you more about the stories versus the... You, you call it tiles, but I call that feed versus yeah, story. Feed. Yeah, but you, but I love yeah. how intentional you are, just because it comes across immediately, right? Uh, that you have probably, I, I would guess then, an album of photos where you get to pick one of your family or one of your traveling every eight pictures that you post, mm -hmm. right? That seems very intentional, mm -hmm. which is good. And that yeah. shows up in the news feed. But then on the story side, um, how long do you think that you've had a running story? So every day I update my story. Right. right. So I guess <laughs> that's my point. Like, is it uh, for the last year and a half? For the oh, like, yeah. I mean, I've been doing Instagram for a few years, and stories get more and more popular. I mean, people watch stories. Like, I watch other people's stories every single day, and just in you have to engage and comment and. There's a whole strategy behind it, and it doesn't take it does take a lot of time, yeah. but that's where I invest my time. Versus in more like, in stories than in feeds. Well, just Instagram in general. Right. Yeah. So. So, so who's story. your who's your Instagram inspiration, or just because you're a millennial and Instagram was the hottest thing ever, you know, starting in earlier in this century, is do you have any? Like in the real estate industry. No, no, no. Like just a. Uh, I, I have a person in mind, but I yeah. want to see if you have any. Not just in general. Someone that promotes marketing that you look to that, and no one? Okay, so if I said Gary what Vee, is, is Gary, do, do you ever listen to Gary Vee for different tips or tricks? Or do you follow him? I believe I follow him, yeah. I mean, I follow like Tom Ferry and other realtors, and I love when realtors follow me. A lot of my followers are other realtors and I've sold my listings from my Instagram story because I do these professional videos of all my listings and behind the scenes, I'll just, if I'm uh, recording a home of the day video at a home, I'll do a behind the scenes picture and I'll get a ton of agents writing me like, hey, I've got a client looking there, like can we get in and see it? And um, it's so powerful, like having other realtors follow you. And Do you find different price points being more successful than other price points? Oh, with the videos? 
like just like do you like I'm just saying do you find it as successful if you do one for five hundred thousand or a million or mm -hmm. two million or I thought you saw it saw you have one for like three million like yeah. do you see a different so success? I really believe in video um, in addition to like social media spending time engaging all of that I always will produce a professional video of ever anything that I list whether it's a ninety thousand dollar lot for sale in Santan Valley or a $2.6 million Chandler estate. We do a 60 second video that's fast moving and we take that video and we target market it out to the right audience. So to, give, to answer your question, I listed a $2.6 million Chandler estate, launched the video on Instagram, targeted um, a certain audience that included realtors. At 4 a.m., a realtor saw the video. He had a client in Miami that um, was looking for maybe like a fifth home that, that could accommodate his horses. He saw the Instagram video, he sent it to his Miami client. We had a showing scheduled at 8 a.m. that day. They did two showings. They almost bought the home, but there was a, like a few speed bumps to get to the home and his Ferrari couldn't go up the speed bumps. True story. I, that happens to me all the time. <laughs> yes, all the time. it originated yes. from yeah. the Instagram video. And I have so many stories. I have a story Is where- Is that Andre Ethier's Because that has speed bumps. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> the but I digress. Oh, yeah. yeah, so it's so cool. Like the power of video and the part the power of targeted marketing. Like I was sitting at an open house and a young couple walked in. They were renting an apartment nearby. They saw the video ad. They came in, loved the home. They're like, we haven't we're not even looking, but how do we buy this home? We sat at the dining room table, typed up the offer, it was accepted, they closed it, they closed on home three weeks later. Like so much power in video, and I've seen that power to where I would never not record a professional video of my listing. Your videos are legit, right? Well, I was I, the other thing I was thinking of is only because in watching your videos, if you're not watching, she should be watching from North, not North and Co. North Amy Youngbridge. Amy Youngbridge, you know Amy Youngbridge? Canada. Oh, probably yes. Yeah, you know who she is? Yeah, she, she does she a lot of videos. Was that she has some great videos? Yeah. yeah. We met her in and she's pretty rocking it. She's killing it. So mm -hmm. yeah. I mean But can I can I ask you more questions about your videos? Yeah. So you do 60 second videos and you um do videos. I also saw that you do client events mm -hmm. where you do videos of your client events as well, right? To share that. And you're uh can we ask budget? Like our listeners that are thinking, what does it cost to create a professional yeah, video? So I um I have a small team behind me, and one of the best hires I ever made was a full-time videographer that works just for me. So we do all types of videos. We do feature business videos, like client appreciation events, and then, of course, our listing videos and promo videos and all that because so much power in it. And I've, I've lost count of the amount of listings that have sold directly because someone saw the video and these videos are getting thousands and thousands of views so it creates that urgency so if you're scrolling through facebook and you see this video has you know three or five thousand views and um it makes that buyer i think even like want to buy the home more mm, nice and so actually we didn't even talk about it you're i'd like to know more about your team so it's not just Shannon, it's the so whole it's the I, Gillette group. Yeah, so my numbers are all homes that I've sold and closed. I know a lot of teams, they'll say they've sold, you know, that agent sold, you know, a billion dollars, but they have like 10 agents selling homes under their name. My numbers are just the homes that I've sold and closed, but of course I can't. When will you abandon that? You mean? When will you develop the Gillette team? I know. She has the so Gillette group. I have an assistant, I have a videographer, I have a transaction coordinator that helped me on the back end of things because I can't do it all myself. So if you had somebody that showed homes for you, would that still count as your sale? I rarely have help in that area. If I'm out of town or something, my assistant might help with showings or, or an open house or something like yeah. that. But really, I mean, it's worked out really well to where I'm able to kind of Manage it yeah, all. no, I'm super impressed. I'm just uh, so we got I a video phone rings a lot. An assistant. <laughs> <laughs> no, when you when you're a lone warrior, right? When you're the main person, especially if you're doing luxury listings, the phone rings a lot. Does your phone ring a lot? All day. Yeah. Okay. Good deal. Yeah. <laughs> More text, like ding, ding, ding. Yeah, no, I sell a decent amount of houses, right? Yeah. Like, I, yeah the, all day long. Yeah. 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 How many agents are on your team? So I'm the only. You're the only agent. And okay, great. Other agents. How many? How about, all right. So how many admin? Three. I have an assistant, transaction coordinator, videographer. Okay, so three, yeah. three people. All right, good. Nice. Uh, so one person on our marketing team. I do all of my own marketing. 
to two people on the marketing team. Well, mm -hmm. video is part of marketing. It's okay, but all the ads and everything. And I know anyone I tell this to, they're like, Shannon, you're crazy. Like, you can't do this all about. It's it's on the no, horizon. No, you're just gonna like, burn out. I'm That's not hard. Right. Right. <laughs> I think she can do it. You, I mean, there was Jeff uh, Grimsmacher, whatever the heck his last name. I saw him in a class, right? Like he did. He was doing eighty transactions. Mm -hmm. uh, did you do eighty transactions? More than that. I no. She does luxury oh, stuff. Oh, so right. yeah, but I mean, and he was he was solo at eighty transactions. And when I met him, because I was doing. I was only doing at the time like 40 transactions and I had an assistant and he was like, no, I, I'm like, well, do you not have anyone to help you? And he's like, no. And I'm like, yeah. I'm like uber impressed that you can do 80 transactions and not have any help. Right. So yeah. would you lean on launch for anything? Like do they provide services? So I stay very organized. I use Trello um, for my to-do list, which I love. It's a free app yeah. to just like put everything down. I get up really early. I work really hard. What's I really early? Um, 4 a.m. No, and trust me, I know. It's just my brand's really important to me and I've only ever received a five-star review. I pride myself on my response time. Like it's just something I need to let go of. I know definitely over the a lot next of OCD. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, over it's the good. next six to twelve months, definitely. Um, you know, you just have to find those right agents. I know it's a mental block I have, but um, <laughs> that's I, 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 I admire you for it. I was just wondering, I mean, it, it, maybe that's part of I mean, I know what it is, is because um you're always the strongest part of your brand, right? Like the individual agent, because the individual agent always does it better. Like I, I, I always, you know, I had a hard time letting go because I know as soon as I hand it off, it's never going to be the same experience, right? But it's just, uh, I was more of, um, are you leveraging that to win at all? That I am woman, hear me roar, right? No? Do you use that? <laughs> I think that that actually has to be the best answer to any Jeff Seabot question that I've heard. That was so just true. the look to the fill of, what no. is he trying to say? What it is, is, no, it's the hustle. Are you kidding me? The shoes have to win? Jeff, I don't want you to talk for a second because I want to explain what I know you're trying to get to. And that is, kudos to your single parent, mother, who put the work ethic in you. Absolutely. you got to get out there and you got to grind. Right. Because to get up at 4 a.m. and to care a lot about your brand and never get a five-star review is legit. And you know that there's a work ethic there. And does she use it to win? Absolutely. Dude, you gotta think I love work ethic. I freaking love this girl. I love her. I know you do. I just think you answer questions that are hard to answer. I know. You'd like to see me have maybe like a few agents helping me. No, no, no. Like, I'm just talking for longer. No. I want you to be, I think you're a hundred million all day long. I think you're two hundred million. And I don't I know how much the the phone can wear you out year after year after year. I mean, right now you're you know you're shining and you're like blaring through the desert, but it's just uh, I'm proud of you. I mean, I I'm, I was just no, I was thinking more of I compete a lot, so maybe you're not competing, but I know that because the seller wants to always believe that it's an individual agent that's going to do everything to service them. And the competition against the team, often that's the best thwart in a solo individual versus the team model because the seller wants to believe the truth. Because the way that real estate has evolved, a lot of consumers still believe that my one agent is going to sell my house. Mm -hmm. Now, you leverage technology, which is the most brilliant part of what you do, to do your marketing so you can you actually can achieve it where most agents are just sticking in MLS and hoping to yeah, sell. Like yeah. You're actually so doing marketing. So. Found. so most agents they'll you know this more it's been a seller's market, so they'll hire a photographer, they'll put a sign in the yard, and then they'll put it in MLS and wait for the buyer to be found. But the reality is a lot of buyers aren't actively online every day searching for a home or maybe you're you have a list. Hold now. a second. You what? don't really believe that. That not every day a buyer's looking for a home online. Yeah, they're looking at your Instagram, they're online looking at a home. Oh, so sometimes people take breaks from looking, or maybe they got frustrated, they couldn't find what they wanted. Maybe they're busy at work, or they're on a trip, and they're just not actively Zillow looking. Zillow has 194 
million visits a day. Somebody's online. <laughs> oh, yeah. but, I actually want to hear her. Okay, I, go ahead. Really, I mean, I've personally gone through that in my own life where like some days my husband and I are like, let's look for homes to buy. And then my, maybe we're really into it, like looking for a week and then like, eh, it's not. Well, there's only already. 6 million yeah. sold and there's 194. Lots of people go in and out of so it. So another thing with that is like Queen Creek, for example. A lot of people have this thing of Queen Creek's very far. So maybe their internet search and their e-alert. You and drove here. It is reasonably far. Yeah. So I have a listing down. Yes. So maybe their Ehlers and Zillow and all that are Gilbert or Chandler. Maybe they're from California and they've never heard of Queen Creek. So our our marketing can get in front of other buyers. And we've taken over listings that have been sitting on the market for months with other agents and sold them with multiple offers at even a higher price. Then so there's proof that video marketing works and it's reaching people like the family that was renting an apartment that wasn't actively looking for a home that came into the open house because they saw the video and they bought the home and broke their lease and there's so many stories I can't just rely everyone's going to see your listing on MLS because no, really no, no, oh no I, that argument I'm a hundred percent and we rely on the same thing you do we're definitely not even close to as good as you are on Instagram we're trying on Facebook but we're internet marketers always trying to push the envelopes to get our our stuff in front of beyond the MLS because I think the we are moving away from the day of the realtor who just relies on MLS to sell their houses because they're really not doing a good enough job for their clients. Yeah, so you. Right, I love see, that you're busting ass to get so it you out. You can see of like on MLS under the activity <clears throat> report, like we all see it that you know maybe 500 people view the listing on MLS and then on Zillow or whatever. But my videos are seen by you know five or ten thousand people and they're selling for many times record-breaking prices like faster than the average days on market for the neighborhood and we're hearing the stories that the marketing really works so so um you talk about the real estate business in obviously a well-educated way right like the way that you're in it and you're grinding you're hustling where do you get your not just instagram inspiration but your real estate like are you a tom do you coach with other with any services with any companies um, so I really rely on YouTube. So if I want to learn how to get my video in front of the right buyers through targeted marketing or Google AdWords or Instagram promoted posts or anything like that, I'll really go to YouTube. And I really had to become self-taught, especially when I started the whole video thing a mm -hmm. few years ago. There weren't a lot of agents doing video the way I do it. I found one agent, um, Jessica Edwards. I don't know if you know her. Um, South Carolina. She does video awesome. Like I just really looked at her YouTube channel and wanted to learn a lot. Do you have a YouTube channel? Yes. How many videos do you have up there? So I do have to post all of my home of the day videos on YouTube because I do a property website for every single listing using relahq.com and you upload your video from YouTube. So I have hundreds. You still so you put that short video up on YouTube? That's awesome. Good deal. Yeah, so. Yeah. So you, so you're <laughs> self-taught is what I think. Yeah, so it's really not to, like, I really feel like so many agents aren't marketing their listings the way they could be. So I just wanted to oh, learn. Oh, sister, you're spot on with that one. Yeah. They are not. They're, oh, well, most cool. people are, I would say, actually, how do we not love her for putting the consumer first? Yes. I mean, consumer if you were the, like, 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 yes, she is coming. <laughs> <laughs> you oh, know, who, 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 did you just have the light? Yeah, yeah. Right? Like, so the whole idea of this podcast was because the industry is focused on how do I get another listing and not how, what do I do to market and sell my listings and putting the consumer first is uh, being in being a realtor and doing a, the best job for your client. You have to try to market houses to try and sell them. I mean, our goal is, I mean, we found the buyer for a listing 61% of the time last year. So it's just, we were looking for other people and this is just, I'm off, I'm over yeah, the moon. Yeah, so I don't yeah. wanna cut any corners. We all could get a listing as realtors that we know is gonna sell really fast, like maybe in 24 hours, but I would never cut a corner. I would never take a listing and not do a home of the day video. And I had a Mesa listing 
about two weeks ago that, you know, I could have just thrown it up on MLS and it probably would have gotten a full price offer and sold really fast. But we did our whole approach with the marketing and all of that. We had 45 showings in two days, multiple offers. It ended up going under contract for 16000 over the asking price, you know, with waiving appraisal contingencies and all that because of all the multiple offers and the interest. It's ultimately like I want to do the best for the seller and get their home sold the fastest for the yeah. most amount of money and all of that. So I don't like to cut like take any so what are you bad at right <laughs> obviously i'm a little bit too controlling i need to and i that's totally my goal like right now in my real estate career i want to be that point of contact i meet with a seller and i talk about the big teams that you might meet with the team leader at your dining room table and then you never see that person again and now Joe, who just got their license, is now negotiating your contract terms at 10 o'clock at night. You don't, you didn't meet that person. You didn't hire that person. You know, there's, there's pros and cons. And that's my goal, you know, in the next two years to start bringing on more agents because I totally agree. I can't work seven days a week forever. Like it's the, my phone dings all day long. It's right now it's working out well for me. I stay very organized. I like to travel with my family and take breaks, and I you schedule. You travel with being a solo agent. God bless you. That's I know. Awesome. Yeah, I just got back from Napa the whole weekend. I was there. It was awesome. So nice. Yeah. No. So I think yeah. that um, this has been awesome. I thoroughly enjoy the conversation about, especially your social media approach, different than anybody we've had on the show before. I think the number one question that all of our listeners are asking, I don't know, did you scroll through the free? It is, what is her Instagram handle? How do we follow you on Instagram? So it's at Shannon underscore Gillette. So G-I-L-L-E-T-T-E. I'm at Shannon underscore Gillette. Awesome. So you were at 12,500 ish followers coming in and i'm sure that you're just going to be at 120 followers <laughs> after the yeah. show well, right, really right you that guys, and you're well, so wait a minute i have one thing well because uh, what i love about her approach is so i was listening to have you ever listened to the water cooler with chris smith um with curator online no. it's a real estate show Anyway, well, they had this guy on, and he was re- relatively successful. They estimated his net worth of being worth a billion dollars. He started NetJets. And he said he thought that uh, experience was overrated because I feel that she has created her own path in her Instagram marketing, right? Like, because it feels very self contrived. And congratulations to you for just going after it, right? Because I think that a lot of people are looking for, I mean, it's just learn, learn as you go, but obviously she's kicking ass with it, right? Like doubling her sales. So great job, dude. Thanks. Yes. I think ultimately you just really need to be authentic. I don't schedule any posts. Like it takes some time. And if, if as an agent, that's what you want to do and grow your business through social media, you have to be investing that time. You have to be wishing people a happy birthday on Facebook and commenting on their posts and liking their posts. Because if, if you just, just are like you post and then you just run away and you never engage in anything like nobody wants. Well, the industry sells agents on to uh, auto post, right? Everybody, everything's about another service or give it to somebody else. Mm -hmm. And what we've seen in social media marketing is that is just paying somebody else. That's not, there's no chance of working that the most successful um, agents in social media are people like yourself that are, it's a lifestyle. I'm in it, and I'm priding myself on developing my own, you know, my own way. So. You have to be authentic. Would you want to follow that? Like a picture of a pretty kitchen and a living room and a house. Like you, we have so many people we follow. We have only a little bit of time each day. Ask yourself before you post something. Would you want to see that? Would you like? I can it? tell by how many comments they hate my shit. <laughs> <laughs> But again, we all have our own path we're going down. You sell a lot of homes, you know, like people want to know you. Like I would want to know what kind of animals you have, like your kids, what are they doing? Like your dog, did they just do something cute? Or are you looking at a house with crazy kitchen cabinets? Or I was showing a home that had, that we were on the balcony of the second floor. It was like my most commented ever like story. And we looked out the balcony and the backyard neighbor had 
thousands of bikes and like trash everywhere and I posted a video of it and um, everyone was DMing me and commenting and you want to post things that people comment on and like especially uh -huh. in your stories because then they'll see your feed if you're posting things that nobody's engaging in they're never gonna see your yeah. stuff so I want to know more about you like as a person so if I follow you on Instagram you might already do this I don't know no I don't we're trying with Facebook because we tried to do a thing on Friday afternoons we did a video and now we're getting 60 70 comments I'm like Oh wow! And I got some. Wow! Yeah. You bring your wife in the yeah. video, and now everybody yeah. wants to watch. Yeah, yeah. Like people yeah. just they want to know you as a person first, and that's why all of my videos. I'm on my video in the beginning, welcoming them to the home of the day because yes. your con the consumer will gain trust and trust you more by seeing your face. So if you're just doing a home video and you're nowhere to be found, and if I look at your Instagram feed, I don't even know what you look like. Like. That's a mistake. Yeah. You know, they, clearly. That's how you gain trust in this day of social media, like taking over our lives. I love it. I got a couple of rapid question, or rapid fire questions as we wrap up. Okay. Some from the audience, right? Oh. So Mike asks. Um, actually, before I get to the audience questions, you said about two hours a day on Instagram. Just yeah, I mean, Ish, but most roughly, right? people that aren't even in real estate are spending that much time too. Yeah, no uh, doubt. And, yeah, just have you met? Hold on, I didn't get to the question. Can I get to the question? So the question is, how much of that is researching how to get better or different ideas versus working Instagram? Yeah, so I consider just like being on Instagram, scrolling through the feed, liking people's posts, engaging, like, oh, that's a cute dog, commenting on their stories, seeing their stories, because everyone looks to see who's watching your stories and just going through. Sometimes you can be getting ready in the morning and just you can just have your stories just run. You can prop your phone up and just see everyone's stories, you know, while you're almost like a newscast. Like multitasking and all of that. And I enjoy it though. I am not doing it just for business. I truly like enjoy following these people and learning more about their lives. Like, you know, if you go to dinner tonight and you post a picture of your meal or that you're at the restaurant, I know it seems weird. Like why would anyone care? But people care. Like they like to see that stuff. Oh my don't how much long text anything. versus short text when it comes to the descriptions? On the feed? Oh, no on your bit on your yes on the feed. Right. Like if you post like a, a picture. Yeah, you post a picture yeah. and you write a description. Are you like paragraphs or are no, you I sentences? mean it really depends. Like Okay. Again, nobody really wants to read a lot and the hashtags. <laughs> yeah, but it has to be interesting. So yesterday, my grandma's in town from Wisconsin. She like has no filter, says whatever's on her mind. Yesterday, I, <laughs> so yesterday I took her to lunch and my grandma, like, she goes, I don't like your new hair color. And so I had a picture of me and my grandma and I, I posted on my feed. I go, I took my grandma to lunch. She told me she hates my hair color. Grandma's cracked me up. And then even in my story, like so many people responded in DM. They're like, my grandma said that too. Grandma, my grandma said this. Like, and it just people. And like hopefully you got the love. Like your hair color looks good. Don't <laughs> listen to grandma. Yeah. So it creates that conversation and people, you're building these relationships with people you may never have met, but they feel like your friends through social media. And then ultimately when they are looking to buy or sell a home, they remember that 80, 20 rule. Shannon's not all in your face real estate. I know Shannon. I know her dog. I know her kids. She sells real estate. She does market homes. I'm going to call her. People call me and they're like, do you, are you taking on new listings right now? Like we want to sell our home. Like I don't even really have to do much of a listing presentation because they already know everything from social media yeah. and that's the goal. Or if they so run into creates, the, yeah. that's what but you have to be is. on the video. Like, yes. Are you yes. On no, no, he's coming to we do a lot of videos. But just because when he, like, oh, he's in a lot of videos. Oh, good. Oh, when he shows, shows up. Yeah. How long website. are the videos? Oh, oh too long. Like, yeah, longer than no, no, not, uh, the, the, the videos Continue. we did are some, are mostly designed for YouTube. Not oh, for they're not that, listings. They're, well, no, no, uh, we do different. I, do, I have a pen, I have a, a video strategy it's called pens. Oh, good. I'll yeah. have to check it out. Yeah. So. Um, all right. So the other question is of the two hours on Instagram, how much of that is Facebook if, or is that a separate yeah, two hours? So I do love Facebook too. My fa I do have a Facebook business page. Now that's where I'll post my videos to promote out there. So I don't have as much personal on my Facebook business, but also my Facebook personal page, which is private. I'm still doing the 80, 20 rule to all the people that I follow from high school or from church or mm -hmm. from my mom's group, or they know I'm a realtor. I'm not like a secret realtor, but I'm not in your face real estate all day long. It's 80% personal, 20% real estate. So you actually 
tipped on something that Mike is asking because you said you post them on your Facebook business page to promote, right? And so do you, you I mean, is that where you run ads just to get? Yeah. So to- every listing, the, that video will be on my Facebook business page. That video will have anywhere from three to 40,000 views. Like, cause that's yeah. where all, and I, and I don't want to get into too many trade secrets, but I like yeah. budget wise, how much does, do you, uh, do you have a cost per view? Yeah, so I minimum a thousand dollars a month in my Facebook ads. Yeah, nice. is that mostly on Instagram or is that on Facebook? So it's a mix. I use Facebook Ads Manager. I love the app because if you're using uh, you, I know we were talking about it a little bit before we went on, but you have to if you're going to implement video, you have to have somewhere for someone to click. You can't just be like, here's my new listing. Okay, well, what's the address? How much is it? Like you want them to click. So I love Relay HQ where you can build a beautiful property website with a domain name. I also tell sellers that if someone's promoting your home and they're making people register to get more information, that agent's doing you a disservice. They're trying to get buyer leads versus getting your home sold because 99% of people are gonna click off if they're if you're requesting their information. Um, the consumers just like will just be turned off by that or maybe they'll copy the address and go to Zillow and look it up. They don't want to really you know, give information. So. Daniel Vasquez says, ha ha, I remember that yard with the bikes that she posted. Yes, so you got some fans yes. out there. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. All right. Anything else for Jeff as we wrap up? I mean, I have lots, but it's, we can't take any more of our time. So, yeah. yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Wow. Yeah. Well, we'll just call this round one then. Maybe round two will be uh, as you start to build a team or as you start to release some of that control. So thank you very much, Shannon, for coming down. We appreciate it. Thank you guys for tuning in. We'll see you on the next. We'll see you on episode 107. Yeah. Thank you. Take it out, Mauricio.